from Fresh Africa, we are here at the free port of Morovia where we have some custom breakers and business individuals who have some disenchantment with how businesses are growing at the free port of Morovia in clearing their goods from the free port of Morovia. Welcome to Front Page and tell us your name. Um, thank you very much. Sir. My name is Michael M. Todd. I'm Deputy Public Relations Officer of the National Custom Breakers Association. Tell us what are some of the difficulties you are going through here. Um, there are a lot of difficulties, and the issue is not um, restricted to the APM terminal. And we have issues with the shipping lines, we have issues with LRA, we have issues with the Minister of Commerce. We have basically we have issues with every um, partner that has to do with trade in Liberia. But the, the trivial issue are with APM terminal. Um, the problem we face with APM terminal there's a lot of delay in the delivery of services here. All right, like for example, um, when you raise a bill for payment, the bill takes almost two hours before it comes back to you. And here, APM terminal gave us five days to be able to clear one container from the port. So if you have to take almost one to two days, you take two, three days to get one container to the consignee. Without APM terminal releasing the goods to the consignee, the goods cannot leave the port of Monrovia. Even though you get goods, add additional payment to the, to, to the charges, the businessman goes and add it to the end user. The ordinary librarian suffer. So it definitely says that APM terminal creates suffering for the librarian people by their delay. The delay in delivery cause suffering on the librarian. So what may be your own recommendation to APM terminal, the government of Liberia, Freeport, and the management? Well, um, I will recommend to the government of Liberia because we have we have met with the MPA and nothing has been done. We have met with APM Terminal and nothing has been done. So I think we need the, the government of Liberia need to come in and make sure APM Terminal deliver on their promises. Because we were told that APM Terminal said we were going to give Liberia a befitting port. But we don't have a befitting port. We don't have a befitting port in the sense that when two vessels are on the terminal or on the pier for, for, for offloading, you will find out that no ship or no truck will be loaded will continue to come out because they have a cream that will have to be serving the vessel at the same time serving the truck. It's not possible. You can work like that. So the government need to revisit APM terminal contract. If it needs to be ratified, be ratified if they can make the correction to ease the pressure on the business people. What's your name again? My name is Michael M. George, Deputy Public Relations Officer of the National Public Association. Welcome to Combeach Africa. Tell us, how do you feel about the delay in clearing goods from the port? Uh, anyway, I'm Tia Manning, <coughs> a broker. I feel very bad. For every day you leave your house to come to the port, you find out there's a problem. We get we get we get a serious problem with the shipping line and that of APN terminal. APN terminal is APN terminal lack of equipment. And definitely, when you don't have equipment, you will not have free flow of trade. We need equipment. We need the government, the new breed of uh, 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 law breakers that want to take over. We need the summer APN terminal to tell the Labyrinth people, for them to tell the Labyrinth people what are, what, how many equipment they have in the port there. Because if vessel import, when one or two vessel import, you find out that any time truck go into the law, they find, they find it very difficult. And for that reason, the truck driver is charging over. And when the truck driver charges, you know who feed it? The consumer. Any money the businessman pay, any money the businessman pay, the consumer feed it. They go add it on the goods. We pay storage on a daily basis. We pay demolish. Why is demolish? Demolish was 15 days. They brought, I mean, tell day, they brought the 15 days. Now it is 11 days. Story was 15 days. They brought it on 10 days. Now it is 5 days. We are suffering. The labor point is suffering. Because this is, this is where the goods and cover no get, get it on the market there. And when the businessmen spend money here, you are expecting to add it on the goods. So, definitely you are expecting the person to go up. Because whatever the business man spend money, he will add it on your goods. So we appeal to the Liberian government, they need to come in. APN terminal and Max Land, the shipping land, Max Land, especially Max Land, suffering the Liberian people. They suffer what have this cost you? What have, how, what have this cost you as a broker? They cost us as a broker to make our job to not go faster. 
because when there is free flow in it, it's free flow in, in the traffic of your job, you come here, you not you not see people online. Here. When truck go in there, the low in let them go our time, get out, you will not see people online. Here. But because of machine, you, the, the system will always be jammed. The system will always be changed. You will come here and see what are the people online. Here. The people here, you get over ten, you get over ten window here, and you get, you get because of internet, they get, they get one man doing ten person job. There is that cover. One man doing ten person job. There is that cover. Now people are rising against people. The people are suffering. The people. people. We are here to represent the people. We want to strike. All people want to. All people feel that we, 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 we want to be against straight. But we are against straight. To tell the government that they should summon a bit of people, a bit of the money together. The new breed of citizens are coming to sell, to summon a bit of money together to produce machine for the black people. The only problem the team is facing right now is the lack of equipment. They don't have equipment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank Send them money some of our out document in for release cash out. We haven't getting our document. Why is the way far? Anytime we saw more than hotel them and people we are working, we are working and only all we eat. So what have this cost you as a broker? So many delays. Sometimes I think I get two of my clients they're trying to take a job on me because they say they say because I'm not effective to do that way. But when you bring it here, you bring it here, then suddenly we'll be starting my head. If we're facing so many, so many problems, brother, so many problems we're facing on a daily basis. How long do it take to get a continue out of the pool? From the beginning, from the beginning, from the beginning, at least when you can't get make one necessary payment in less than at least on a 35 minutes, 11, 35 minutes, you don't have a one-star shot. But now, in less than, so on the four hours there, if possible. Your, your document will be here. Are you saying a one-star shop is not working anymore? It's not working effectively. So what do you want now? We want to change. We want the government to revisit the APM terminal contract. We want the government to revisit the APM terminal contract because that's the only way they will work effectively. Have you raised this with the association? Yes, yes, but anytime we raise the association, we uh, uh, always meet them. And when they meet them, sometimes they will just, they will just do it for one day and immediately that one day back. They get back to their own state. We need, we need to take the issue very serious. Okay, thank you. I want to say something. I want to say something. Welcome to Front Page Africa. Okay, you one of the brokers. Tell us, how do you feel about this delay in clearing your customer goods from the port? Since the morning of the, I think six o'clock, I sent my truck in there. My first thing that I speak. After nine, after twelve, they are now here loaded one. It's a frozen, frozen truck. And for every day, frozen sleep, the charge seventy two dollars for 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 plucking. Every day, for every day, for frozen. So after now, my truck is in there. Nothing at all go. So what do they charge you when you have already paid your money to clear your team in? They are the one responsible to clear your team, to get your team out. What do you feel about that? It doesn't hurt as I said. You pay in five days, you should have your team out in five days, but well, it takes long. Yeah, but no matter for, for plug and close to the a day for plug you have to sell, the charge on the two that for plug and one day for plug. So after now, I set my truck in there, send the money after now, after two. They are not only one, they are still waiting. So what, what, what uh, impact does this have on the economy, you think? It better. But definitely, when a businessman goes through this kind of problem, they come back to us and make people suffer it. So what, what is your recommendation or what is your own word to government? Government has to try to come in and people put in more machines and see how best things can go effective in this country. Thank you. You say her name again? Thomas Creole, my name. Thank you. Let me talk to this female. Good afternoon and tell us your name. Welcome to Front Page Africa. Uh, well, I'm Nick Nema Johnson. <laughs> well, 
Broker, how do you feel about the delay in clearing your customers' goods from the port? Very bad. Very bad. APN terminal is going on 12 times. What I'm saying, they have started with their overnight. See, Lamari, they have started with their overnight, they need their money. to you as a broker to your customers. What do you have for the management of free port, the custom, and the government as a whole? Others are saying this is international standard they are bringing to Liberia. Do you believe in that? All are saying the APN terminal delay is all about international standard. Do you believe that? So if you if you you were in the position to regulate, how long do you think you will give a continue to be clear out of the port? Thank you. What's your name again? Lema Joseph, my name. Let's see if we can talk to another female here. I'm from Africa. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Tell us your name and wait. Tell us your name. You are here today, and there are others who are frustrated about the slow pace in clearing containers from the port. What do you make of that? And what are they? Because if the, if the Indian terminal is saying you pay for 24 hours, meaning if you pay 3 o'clock, they should also go to the 24 hours. But if they delay and you pay by 3 exact, one minute after 2, they don't know you. They will pay you for a dollar day. So I feel it's not right. So it's not a lot of for us. I need a lot of customers also here to do that. Are you a business person? So how do you feel during this season time you are not getting your goods out? Sorry? How do you feel during this season time you are not getting your goods out? You know it's hard for you. So what would be your recommendation? You think APN Timber is getting more money from the business people? Thank you. Thank you very much. We are still here at the free port of Moravia. Let's see if we can talk to this gentleman. Tell us your name. Um, I'm Ebenezer D. Wallo. I work for Starzoo Enterprise. Tell us, what do you make of the delay in clearing? Uh, right now, as you can see, we 
So what do you want now? I recommend the government of the contract. President or past president. Good afternoon and welcome to Frontpage Africa, leader of the National Custom Brokers Association of Liberia. Your name first. Thank you for having me. I'm James. Uh, James Lawrence Hine. Okay, position? I'm the President of Custom Brokers Association. Okay, now many of your members are complaining about the slow pace in clearing their continuance of goods from the free port of Morovia, and this falls on you as president. What have been your own stand? The challenge is numerous. The problem that the association has been having is that uh, we are now having authorities in government to stand up to the private businesses and push the labor people's interests. The European terminal have a concession with the government to deliver and produce an effective and efficient port. For us in the problem that we face with the terminal is that it has equipment problem. Okay, they have one uh, 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 equipment that is loading the continuous, that is uploading the vessel, and that same equipment is taking the empty continuous from the truck back. So they're taking, uh, people are taking about two to three days to load a single continuous. And if you are supposed to load your continuous today, and today expire, it means that the next day you pay additional costs. So what we have been saying as a suggestion to them is that since in fact you don't have this capacity, give the people the benefit of the doubt. If I met all my requirements for APN terminal, say I pay my, my, my handling charges, if there was storage, I pay my storage 100% and I've got it okay to load, it is on the terminal to load my container. So the terminal have to give the people the benefit of the doubt for at least a one day period after you satisfy their requirements. And if you can load in that one day period, then they can tell you that, oh, you owe all another storage. Or once I get my truck and the truck is in the queue to load and I met all APM terminal requirements, at the close of the day, there should be the APM terminal staff that will come and take note of the continual number, the entry permit number, so that APM terminal know that they are at fault. They owe the businessmen the loading. But as it is now, they are making money out of the situation. And there's nobody to complain to, let me speak. The main reason why we're facing the problem that we're facing the point is that we don't have a managing director here currently. What do you the say of so your tour is the managing director? Never listen, never cares about the concerns of the labyrinth people. How many times have you the met port, The port authority, the managing director of the port authority is the biggest supervisor to the APN terminal. They are the landlord. They are, they are having staff in the terminal to monitor how effective APN terminal is functioning. And even when the fall short of, 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 of being efficient, the, the NPA can make sure that we ensure that that happens. But we have a managing director that never speaks to APN terminal of this issue. The issues are visible. I don't need to meet it. I've met him on three occasions. But not to mention that the issues are visible. And you have to start working alone. The scene, the suffering that the business people, the brokers, and the public is going through for the, 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 the inefficiency of APM terminal without the port authority call the APM terminal to a single meeting to align them on the situation and ask them to move forward. This is disheartening. The Custom Brokers Association and the Custom Brokers as a whole, we are trade facilitators. We are not here to distort 
business processes. But these business processes, when they have in flair, or they produce a barrier to trade, we are the ones that usually flare, you know, the red flare to say this is happening to government, this is happening, the stakeholders need to make intervention for better trade. And we've done that work, can period. So what, what, what next for you? You have done it, you are going through all of the negotiations, all of the meetings now, things still remain the same. What next for you as an association? So we will be constrained to take action that will be unfavorable for business climate. When you but say unfavorable, what do you mean? Because if we take action, it's going to stall the business processes for two to three days, and that's going to affect the economy. That's why we are going very slowly to continue to mitigate with the stakeholders, especially the authority that we put in charge, the government, to make sure they act. That's why uh, uh, yesterday I was with the, the Commissioner of Customs, and he has shown me that there will be a meeting with APN Terminal, the NPA, the shipping line tomorrow by 11 o'clock for all to help to mitigate the challenges for all the people to, to them and to emphasize the challenges we face and hopefully they come up with plans that work. But if all those negotiations that we are going to, we've been going through, through, the, through the processes, it's not working. Now, for, for, for instance, the, 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 the APN Terminal was closing their gate to, to, to truck entry into the post of loading. Four o'clock, we make the intervention, they extended the town to six. It couldn't work. We make intervention, they extended the town to make to go throughout the night. But even with that, because of the shortage of equipment, they are using no food, they're making no effort, going no further because they don't have the equipment to low continue. And who have that authority to put pressure on the terminal to make sure they acquire those equipment that will effectively run the port? It's the port authority. The port authority. But the port authority is Duma and nobody is speaking to it. And one of the brokers will yet to be the voice in this economy to speak to trade issues. And sadly, in other country, we have what we call authority or, or, or maritime authority, not the maritime authority, but shipping authority that will supervise all shipping authorities activities in the country that we can run to to complain that will make a certain that mm -hmm. port be a hopeful functioning port. But you can't have a, a terminal that signed contract with government for 25 years, getting millions of dollars, you know, every month from Labrand people pockets and cannot deliver in just loading a container on, on truck and allowing the business people to pay on due cost that will be passed on to the business people on our own street. You have this is this is something that will take serious session to. The only reason why you see the Google Association has not taken action and we have done that, we have demonstrated that we can lock down this port and there will be no activities in the port. The first reason is that we are not bearing. The second reason is that this is a peak season. We don't want to store business processes, but we certainly this as a caveat. This is a warning to authorities that be. Who have the authority to act to make a certain that the terminal function as the way it should? If they don't do it, we have no other alternative but to embarrass the whole economy to everybody that you Embarrass the in economy, don't you think it will be storing other people constitutional exactly rights? Exactly the point I already made. Now, this, these are some of the reasons why we are so reluctant. So what are the, what are those things you are taking under the table when you meet the management of APN Terminal this, 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 and tomorrow? The equipment problem cannot be solved in two to three weeks. The APN Terminal have to procure equipment that are able to run the port. That is a count. But in the meantime, what we're going to require is that if you get your entry permit, that means you certify all of the requirements, you pay your terminal charges, you pay government, government custom duty, and you are ready to load your containers. And you are given the chance, you are given your entry permit to go in the terminal to load, you have require your truck, your truck is in the queue. It is the APN terminal liabilities to make sure that that is loaded. In the event where they are unable to load it, any extra cost should be the cost that will incur on the truck, the extra day you pay the truck driver, the extra terminal fees, the extra bill that you're going to pay the shipping. Now, that liability should be on APN terminal because it is a shortcoming that allows those liabilities to incur. Those are things that we're going to push and we're going to make sure the state actors take the necessary action to give the business pro relief, and that's why we are here. Finally, finally, in summary, uh, the Broker Association will always be there at that voice. We are the one that, you know, follow the trade processes, the procedures established by government and other regulatory agencies to facilitate import and export. But while we do that to facilitate trade, we are mindful of trade barriers. We are mindful of, of the bureaucratic procedure that will cause additional overhead costs to businesses. And when we raise that flag, we will always expect the state actors to take control. When they don't take, take action, then we leave with no other alternative but to take a very robust action that will lead to 
and the additional prior entry, and that's what we don't want to do. So they should take this from the broker association that they should call their attention. We need to speak to the authority that be the National Food Authority Managing Director is almost a two-pair bulldog. He has acted on no issue. The issue with the CTM, the, the, the CTN, as you may be aware, those issues were raised. We specifically talk to him on his or our attention to to alleviate the hard burden from the business people in terms of the extra you know penalty that people pay when they low on the on, on when they load and on the chop. He asked us to go out there and do research and show him how they live work in the other country. We proving that he has done nothing. We still pay no penalties today. So all the conditions are going on. The terminal the APA, the NPA uh, uh, managing director, Mr. Bill Travel, is here. He's watching, he's condescending. He has taken no action. He has called no stakeholder meetings for us to express our dis disappointment. So that's what, what we do you make of that. what do you make of course that APN terminal contract should be reviewed by the national legislature? I think it was a mistake by a public leader to even set the sign of clause in the contract to say it cannot be reviewed. That was a very bland decision, and I believe that the legislature can still take it into consideration because it is two sides of the bargaining. While we pay all the resources to you. You must give us the services that we never had in the past. I'll tell you for example, to no continue in the port before APN terminal, there were 15 days period that you could take your time, process documentation without any extra liability for storage or demorage. But now we have five days. In that five days, to get an RPD for commerce, you're taking four to five days already. You get to be back to get a report that you that will enable you to make declaration to custom for you to be able to pay custom due date. It takes you another four to five days. So it's almost impossible for anybody to bring goods in the country without paying extra costs for storage and demolish. And so it is a system that will allow us to function in a way that will reduce costs on the business. When those costs are reduced, the average effect will be on the ordinary commodities on the market that you and myself will work for. So when I relent, we give in the stakeholders and those who will be fortunate to listen to the podcast today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. On Wednesday, after the meeting on Tuesday tomorrow, if we don't have if we don't have the, the result or the resolution, we expect to mitigate the challenges at least for now until after the peak season, where we can demand them to bring those equipments, we'll take action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a member or an official of APN Terminal. Good afternoon and welcome to Front Page Africa. Tell us your name and position. Good afternoon and hello to everyone. My name is Thomas Moore. And I am the head of commercial for APM Terminals Liberia Limited. Thank you very much for coming and affording us the opportunity to address these pertinent issues that are impacting the trade environment and impacting our customers as a whole. Okay, uh, I just want to be clear that uh, we as APM Terminals we are aware of the challenges that our customers are going through and we have taken steps to address these challenges. What are the steps? Well, one fact that we must make clear is that what we are experiencing is the impact of the big season. We know that at this time of the year, it is normal that there will be a high demand, a high influx of goods and at the same time all of the importers will be in a rush to take delivery of their goods at the same time and this creates a huge bottleneck and demand at all stages however some of the steps that we have taken to address the situation to be able to support our customers and ease the burden of the people of Liberia and the business of uh, community include one, we have extended our working hours at the one star shop. Our uh, team here, they regularly work beyond the normal closing hour of 5 p.m. We have extended the gate hour beyond the normal closing hour of 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And we saw that this has not addressed the issue. Finally, what we did was to extend the opening hours of the gate to 24 hours. As we speak, our gate does not close before the customers and before the consignees. We keep the gate running to give them the opportunity, to give them ample time to be able to 
go into the terminal with their trucks and take delivery of their containers. With regards to equipment, mm -hmm. I want to assure the public, I want to assure our customers, I want to assure our partners that we do have container handling equipment within the terminal. We do not have shortage of equipment. How many are functional? How many are functional? We have all of our equipment are functional. If he says he has container, uh, equipment issue, he needs to be specific and speak to the part of which uh, equipment. The only equipment that I know of, they are demanding of that this is an ongoing discussion with the government or our partner, is a gantry cream. And that has to do with shape to show. But when it comes to equipment, container handling equipment, restockers, empty handlers, and other truck lifts, and other equipment that will help us and enhance the truck loading process, we have five operational restockers that are handling uh, equipment within a year as we speak. We have vessel operation going, we have truck deliveries going on, and we have sufficient equipment. The fact remains that there are a lot of vessels coming and the demand is high. And as a result of that, the yard is a bit congested. And so, with the congestion in the yard, it takes us time. Let me just give you more information that will address you yes, about the going Just before you go, just before you go, you talk about the, the festive season. Are you, were you not condescending of the fact this festive season will come? You admitted that this is something that happened usually. So you should have planned for it instead of and line this to go this far. Definitely, we did plan for it, and we. But it's are, not working. We it's are not working, working with our partners. People need to understand. We work together. If we take and make an intervention, and you think that that's intervention, we all look at it. It is not meeting your need. We go back to the drawing board. We sit and discuss, and we come back to be able to address the concerns of our people. We understand and we are taking all of the steps and all of the measures. We are in close collaboration with the various stakeholders. Now, one of the main concerns we see is that even if the game runs 24 hours, it means that the truck that comes from the terminal are going to park in the port because all of port stakeholders are not running 24 hours. We need the LRA to come in and extend their gate operation beyond 6 p.m. We need the MPA to extend their operation. We need other stakeholders within the port and trade environment to support the process and be able, because if the port is congested, to some extent it's going to impact what is happening within the terminal. So we want to assure the public, we want to assure the business community, we want to assure our partners and customers that APMT is here for you. How soon do you expect to address this issue? We are awesome. in discussion now with uh, the Custom Brokers Association, the Liberia Revenue yeah. Authority and other stakeholders to have a stakeholders meeting tomorrow where we can listen to additional concerns that they have and together come up with other ways, innovative ways, innovative solutions to address them adequately in order to make sure that the trade environment remains functional. They, are give, they, they, are, they have given you three days to see how best you can bring this under control. So after three days, if you don't, there will be unspecified action by then, say the president. Thank you very much. Well, it's a good thing that we have a planned discussion that we will be sitting down on the drawing board tomorrow to have some discussion. And so it's a collaborative effort that what we are going to do together and what we're going to come up with, hopefully, will address some of the concerns, if not all of the concerns that they have. We need to always work with one another. What we are doing is to ensure that the trade environment is conducive for everyone. It's to ensure that our people get their goods when they bring it into the country. And so I don't think it is uh, productive to see that, well, one player in the trade environment is the issue. We need to look. APM Terminal gave you a free time grace period. Why is it that you only come to the terminal after the grace period? What is happening? What is preventing you from coming to take your container when the container arrives? 
We see they are crying that they are paying stories. We do understand. But you have the opportunity to process your document before the vessel arrives. If you do this and come to the terminal, even if they told you one day and two days, you still have extra three days to clear your container. There are others who say they process the document in time, but getting it out of the port is a problem because you lack of equipment. So I can call the custom brokers and other partners at all times to come and see. We do have container handling equipment. Now, I was about to tell you the reality of putting in the yard, and you said, okay, um, to, to some point, I should enumerate one or two before going to that. Now, the reality is that if you have so many containers in the yard, and we have vessel containers to discharge containers faster than the customers can take delivery of, it means that it will take you some time to locate a single container. If a broker comes in the port and requests for a container, the container he's looking for is not the one that is sitting on top. Usually you have to find that container. When you locate the container, you find the container is hidden in the stack. You have to what? Dig that container up, add a clear four to five containers to get to that container. And so we need to understand the situation. It's not a matter of equipment shortage, and I assure you that we have equipment, adequate equipment handling uh, machines, container handling equipment that are loading within the port, serving the vessel, serving the trucks. We even have empty handlers that do not handle the four containers. This equipment, they are specifically to handle the empty containers. This tells you that we still have additional equipment that will always